All right, guys, I think it's about that time that we address the common enemy here. And yes, I am talking about Wi-Fi, but we won't be talking about that this video. We're going to be talking about this menace over here. If Smash Brothers had a supervillain, this would be it. Now, I think Steve is broken. And what I mean by that is that I think that he's in a completely different league than anyone else. Like, if you're not choosing Minecraft Steve in a tournament bracket, you don't want to win badly enough. Now, before I keep rambling on about this character, let's really talk about what makes this character so broken. Now, every Smash game has had a best character, you know, Brawl had Meta Knight, Smash 4 had Bayonetta, etc. And one of the more relevant games that still have a competitive scene today outside of Smash Ultimate is Melee. Now, everybody knows that Fox is broken in Melee, and most people would agree that he's the best character in that game. However, the difference between Fox and Melee and Steve from Ultimate is that if I hand my 8-year-old cousin a GameCube controller and tell him to play as Melee Fox, he won't miraculously win a Super Major. Now, it would seem like every month or so, some random teenager will just spawn into the Smash Brothers ecosystem and just start beating top players and even going as far as to win Majors with Minecraft Steve. Like, if you think I'm exaggerating here, or you don't think Steve is as absurd as I'm describing right now, then let me tell you, the Nile is not just a river in Egypt, my friend. Which actually brings me to my next point. You see, I noticed that Smash players tend to follow this trend that I like to call the five stages of denial. And if you don't know what that is, no worries, I'm about to walk you through those steps right now. Stage 1 of denial. Ask yourself, why would we even ban a character that's not even the best in the game? Now, deciding which character is the best in a fighting game is usually subjective. However, most people will usually agree on a certain character being the best in the game if that character meets certain standards. So, what are those standards? Is it a character that is able to consistently win tournaments? Or it's a character that does really good against the meta-relevant characters? Or is it a character that's able to consistently beat top players? Hmm... I wonder if Steve is any of those. Step 2 of Denial. Tell yourself that, even if that character is the best in the game, at least that character isn't winning any majors. Mirikola, Japan's finest 15-year-old Wi-Fi warrior. One day he decided he wanted to fly out to a major and show the world the potential of his schnasty steed. So, for his first international major tournament, he flew out to North America to compete. He then proceeded to beat a bunch of top players, didn't lose a set to anybody, won the whole tournament, and then flew back to Japan. Based. Except one day he decided, you know what, those punks didn't have enough. Let me go teach them another lesson. So he went ahead and registered for the biggest tournament of the year, Super Smash Con. Except he had to withdraw from the tournament due to outside circumstances. Whew, what a relief. It looks like for this tournament, everyone is safe from Steve's wrath, huh? Just kidding. These Steve mains are like roaches, because whenever there's one of them, you can always count on 15 more of them to pop up. Now let's meet our next teenage rising star, Onan. Another Wi-Fi Steve. Except about a year ago, just like Aikola, he also decided to start competing offline. And what happened? This dude then proceeded to win four majors in a row, one of them being Super Smash Con, which, as I've previously mentioned, was the biggest major of the year. Oh, and then I also mentioned that he didn't lose a single set in any of those majors? Hmm, sounds familiar. Gee, it sure seems like Steve is winning a lot of these major tournaments, huh? Who would have thought? Stage 3 of Denial. Tell yourself that, even though Steve is winning these majors, it's only because none of them had to face MKLeo in bracket. Otherwise, none of them would have stood a chance. Oh, what do you know? It seems like Onan was seated 16th in this tournament, which makes him projected to play against MKLeo. Huh, what a pickle. Will MKLeo finally put these Steve mains in their place and prove that this character is overrated? I mean, come on guys, let's be real here. It's MKLeo. Of course he's gonna beat this random teenager. This kid got nothing on the best player in the world. Just kidding. Onan then proceeds to give MKLeo the biggest ass whooping of his entire career. My boy was splunking in Byleth's cheeks. In his entire career of competing in Smash Ultimate, MKLeo has never been 3 stocked in a set that he also got 3 Odin. Hold up. 3 Odin? Onan? Let that sink in real quick. The best player in the world got three stocked by a teenager that has never been ranked in the history of Smash Brothers. The best players in the world dream of this kind of flex and this unranked Steve player is making it a reality. 
Can you imagine how embarrassing this must be for every top player that's on a losing streak against MK Leo right now? Bro, if I was a top player and I saw this, I would just hang up the controller. Like, what's even the point? Man, these top players must suck. How are you getting showed up by a high schooler, bro? Speaking of top players, let's take a quick look at the Buzz. The Buzz has been one of the best competitive Smash Brothers players in the world since Brawl, and he's been playing this game religiously ever since. In fact, if he's not practicing this game, he's just taking notes on what he should be practicing. And then he goes back to practicing. This man plays Smash Brothers at least 10 hours a day, every day because it's quite literally his job. All this man trains for every day is to beat MKLeo so he can finally get past his biggest obstacle and take the crown for himself. So, given all of his efforts, what kind of results does this bring our Smash Guru? This man is currently on a 12 set losing streak to MKLeo. In fact, out of the 19 sets that they have played, the Buzz has only beaten him once. That means the Buzz has a 5% win rate on MKLeo, which is only 5% higher than the win rate I have against MKLeo. That means I'm only 5% worse than the top player. Hmm, not bad. But probably not quite what the Buzz has been hoping for. You know what? Maybe 10 hours of practice a day is not the right kind of practice. Lucky for us, Onan has been gracious enough to enlighten us with his wisdom and explain to us in full detail what his training regimen is like. Like, you know, you say you had a lot of nerves leading into the, the yeah. match against Leo. What was the, the process behind that? Did you just kind of like, did you prep for any of his characters? Or did you just decide, you know, I'm just going to go in, whatever he throws at me, I'll have the game plan ready. I went to Taco Bell at like midnight. I got a crunch wrap, went to bed, woke up, and I was like, man, I have to fight MK Leo in like 40 minutes. And then I just didn't warm up. <laughs> and then I just went in with no warm up. Oh, stop messing with me. I played randoms yeah. with my friends. That was literally it. He ate Taco Bell and played random doubles for a couple of minutes. Why the hell did I not think of that? You see? This right here, this is in the mind of a world-class esports champion. This is the type of training regimen you gotta do if you wanna win. The buzz, you must feel stupid right now, huh? That's a whole decade of practicing fundamentals down the drain. Stage four of denial. Tell yourself that, well, it isn't like the meta is over-centralized around Steve. There's still character diversity in the top placements, right? Here's a count of how many player representatives each character had in the top 128 placements of the tournament. Now here's the same count, but for the top 64 placements. Notice the gap. Now just to be clear, I don't have a problem with this specifically. I mean, it makes sense that the people in the top ranks are going to use the best character. The actual problem lies in the fact that when I look at the melee side of things and see Fox everywhere, I think to myself, oh, Skurzo, Mango, and Axe all made top 8? Yeah, that makes sense. These are all recognizable players that have been playing this game for many years. However, when I look at the ultimate side of things, I think to myself, Apple and Onion? What? Quandale, Dingle, Lingle, who the fuck? Literally every Steve player that's placed this high has never had a significant result, ever, at any event. Until they picked up Steve. Whenever I watch Grand Finals of SmashCon, I see my sister, a player that has been ranked top 10 in the world for the entirety lifespan of Smash Ultimate. Versus Onan, someone who picked Steve on the character select screen and said, Haha, <laughs> God mode activated. And then back through Maester at 43%, and Maester died for it. <laughs> like, what is this? Onan was beating Maester so badly that when Maester was finally able to take one game off of Onan, the people at the event popped confetti and celebrated. Maester, a top 10 player in the world, received praise for being able to take a single game off an unranked Steve player that has only been playing competitively at offline events about a year ago. Can you imagine how embarrassing that must be that you're the underdog of the event, yet everyone is cheering and celebrating that you lost a game? Like, you guys don't find any shame in this? Now, production claims it was an accident when he had popped confetti because they already assumed that Onan won. But I don't know what's worse. The idea of them popping confetti because Maester took one game? Or the idea that they saw a top 10 player in the world go up against Steve and he already assumed that his chances of winning were over? And for the last stage of denial, stage number 5. Tell yourself that, Well, Steve might be over-centralizing the meta, but that's only because people don't know the Steve matchup. Bro, where is there to learn? Like, there's maybe one piece of genuine advice against this character, and that is, don't get hit. <laughs> like, let's be honest with ourselves, this character is literally just a cheat code. Like, I'm being dead serious right now, there are rules in the competitive scene of Smash Bros. Ultimate. But if you choose Steve, fuck the rule set. This is literally the only character that can just bend the rules. Oh, you're taking me to Final Destination because you don't like platforms? Well, too bad, I'm putting the platforms in there myself. And now I'm platform camping you on a stage with no platforms. 
I just turned this bitch into Battlefield. This character can literally enter stage builder mode mid-match and create platforms where there's no platforms. Like, is that not insane to anyone else? And it's not just the platforms. Like, the competitive Smash scene has created a rule set where you can only choose specific stages that go by specific standards. One of those standards being that the stage cannot have walls around the stage. This is because the whole point of the game is to launch people off stage into the blast zone, so having walls get in the way can be super annoying. However, this is the only character that can just build walls. So if you're launching him off stage at what would be death percent, he can just tech the wall. Like, I used to make a joke where if someone launches you at kill percent, you should just tech the blast zone to survive, but... This character takes that joke literally. Now your kill moves are useless. He can even build walls to help him extend his combos. Like, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this character can literally do whatever he wants. He can ladder combo you upwards, he can ladder combo you sideways, hell, he can ladder combo you downwards. My man got omnidirectional combos. Like, what other character can do this? Now let's slow down for a second. Of course this character looks broken on the surface. But this is a game that was created by professional developers after all. So I'm sure they added some balancing to this character, right? Let's look at his kit real quick. He has exceptional frame data that he can shield press you to the point that you can't even punish him. He can throw three up airs and a short hop, which is reminiscent of Brawl Meta Knight, who is notorious for being broken. And on top of having really, really, really good frame data, he has really, really, really strong moves. He can kill you with his forward smash at 50, and because of how good his frame data is, he can just spam it. In fact, if he has gold, it's the fastest forward smash in the game. And if he's not spamming that, he's just spamming back air, which can also kill at 50. Oh, and for the record, he has two back airs. Yeah, he has a sword back air and a pickaxe back air. The sword being the fastest one, which is also the fastest back air in the game, coming out frame 4. And the pickaxe one being much slower, but much deadlier. But, what makes this really cool is that he can combo his frame 4 back air into the other one that kills. That means he has a frame 4 out of shield option that can kill you at 50. Jesus Christ, this character is based. And if it wasn't enough that this character can just build platforms and walls or do whatever he wants, they decided to also give this character a command grab. Cause why not? But not just any command grab, it's a projectile command grab. Literally the only one of its kind, where he can just throw it out, and if it grabs you, he can combo off of it. He can combo off a projectile command grab. Like, at this point, why would you not play this character? What doesn't he have? But what bothers me the most about this character is the fact that even if he's in disadvantage, he can somehow cheese you. Like, even if I'm trying to catch his landings, he can just throw a downwards projectile that kills at 50. Honestly, at this point, I can go on and on about this rant, but I think you guys get the point. Now, to conclude my video, do I think this character should be banned? Um, no, just uninstall the game.